Okay, we have the green bars, we have the live counter sticking up, so we should now be live, which of course means welcome back to the Storytime Network. This was supposed to be the roast of Naruto, but after the news of, what was it, Thursday? Thursday um, evening, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it kind of didn't feel right to be shitting on Naruto for a couple of hours. Um, it instead felt more appropriate to, you know, talk a little bit about Akira Toriyama, um, his general impact on the world, let alone, you know, uh, the industries that he worked in. And, you know... And a little personal stuff as well yeah. about, like, how he came to see yeah. his work. Personal impacts on us as well. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. we're three internet fools who are mostly just fans compared to, you know, people who worked on stuff like Dragon Ball or uh, Dr. Slump, Sandland, Chrono Trigger, Dragon Quest, whatever. But, you know, I think it's still worth, we think it's still worth, you know, talking about this sort of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I, for the setup, I've put up some images of Toriyama's most well-known works. Um, I mean, obviously... Specifically, he was the mangaka for uh, Dr. Slump, Dragon Ball, and Sandland, and did the character designs and creature designs for Chrono Trigger, Dragon Quest, and Blue Dragon. Mm. And, like, the Dragon Quest designs are kind of, like, what a big part of JRPG history. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and like, even Dragon Quest inspired Final Fantasy as well. <laughs> like, if you if you see a picture of like what the original design for the slime was versus what Toriyama designed the slimes to be, mm -hmm. like, so it's, it's a world of difference, and it's hard to come up with a more iconic creature design than the than the Dragon Quest slime. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's a design that you know still pops up in video games and anime today. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just seeing a blue little little guy, and yep. yeah, with those silly little eyeballs and all that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I I think it's a sign of just how good of an artist Toriyama was that. He was asked to do, you know, character and creature designs for for a video game, let alone, you know, something like Dragon Quest. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Dragon Quest is such a huge thing now as well. You know, it's... Releases of new it's games like... are practically national holidays in Japan. No work gets done for like a week afterwards or yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's it's an incredibly popular series, and you know, part of that is absolutely down to the designs. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but we should should we start with the Toriyama's career, or should we start with how we uh, came to witness him as a or see his work for the first time? Witnessing him just sounds like we're it part of Mad Max, but um... yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I mean, for my part, you know, I was. This is how I got into anime in general is through Dragon Ball Z abridged, um, and then you know, going from there. I mean, once. Once I'd watched Abridged, I then went and watched um, OG Dragon Ball um, via the high seas. And, you know, I absolutely enjoyed myself. I still think that OG Dragon Ball is absolutely amazing. Um, I mean, I think... I mean, here's the other thing, you know, we... I have issues with with Z in the sense of the anime, but you know I've read the manga for it, and it's a remarkably 
certainly, you know, the pacing is nowhere near as bad, but, you know, you... You look at it and you go, sort of... Well... You know, it's... It feels... Generic, almost, but the reason that that is, is because... It was the codifier for so many so many tropes and so many story patterns and characters mm -hmm. it was the origin point really tezuka kind of created the foundation for the uh, what's the word i'm looking for uh, for the manga world as it is basically manga world as it is, but toriyama was the one that basically let it built it into what it was mm. if if tezuka was the grandfather of manga toriyama was almost certainly the father of manga and definitely the father of modern shonen manga oh absolutely i mean you know you go back to that period and the three main ones that people always mention are you know jojo's with araki um fist of north star and dragon ball and toriyama um Mm -hmm. As well as as and well it, as Berserk and Miura to um to an extent on the more you know adult side, but on the certainly on the shonen side, um it's those I three. Mean, if, if you look at manga from back then, especially shonen manga from that that back then, and you look at the action and how it's drawn compared to like if you compare like Fist of the North Star or Saint Seiya or JoJo to Dragon Ball. The action in Dragon Ball, the choreography is just incredibly clear and incredibly well drawn. I mean, that's uh, like we mentioned before. Toriyama was a fantastic artist, um, mm -hmm. and you know, especially especially in OG, you know, some of those fights were were really intricately choreographed and really well done. With you know great story behind them um yeah he changed tax a bit for z but again doing escalating to a to an extent that i'm not certainly from what i know you know other manga of the time weren't doing that um but in the process of doing so creating you know I mean, you look at the you look at the antagonists for Z, and they are pretty much all iconic in mm -hmm. manga and anime history. I mean, you've got Vegeta, you've got Frieza, you've got Perfect Cell. Um, A lot of villains, even nowadays, are derivative of like both design-wise and personality-wise. They're derivative of what Toriyama created with. Frieza, Cell, even Boo to an extent. I mean, you know, um, he look, codified a lot of villain tropes too, yeah. especially like the villain transformation, like oh, yeah. and the, the arc of villain transformation, going more and more monstrous until they become a lot sleeker, a lot more yeah. human-like. I mean, even if that was only, you know, out of editorial interference on the part of uh, on the part of Cell. <laughs> I mean, sometimes editors do <laughs> jump off a writing in the author. I mean, to be, to be fair, that. would we necessarily have talked as positively about the uh, about the Andro Android saga if the overall villains had been 19 and 20? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. I think he could have gotten away with 17 and 18 because, you know, oh, there's, yeah. there's an element of, of creepy children there, but come on, the, the clown and the old man were never going to go down well. <laughs> no. Although I am curious, how would they have made him the androids a bigger threat somehow? Like, mm. what would have been the next step for 17 and 18, you think? It's hard to say. Toriyama was not a long-term planner when it yeah. came to his writing. Like, he might have done, had some broad strokes ideas for long-term plan, but he, he, he was very much a pa uh, a pantser, someone who writes by the seat of their pants. And the fact that he managed to do so well at that is, again, indicative of his ability. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you look, you look at... <clears throat> 
his influence on, you know, let's say one man manga artist in particular, Tagashi, you know, written Yu Yu Hakusho and Hunter Hunter, two of, you know, the most well-regarded manga series out there. Um, you know, and better... one of the most. Go ahead. Inspiring characters in yeah. that in Hunter Hunter, literally. You could call him a cell knockoff in terms of design. I mean, that's you know that that is the joke surrounding Meruweb is that he is a, he is a cell knockoff. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, you go to Yu Yu Hakusho and you know you look at Hiei, the short, spiky-haired guy who is you know the token uh, villain of the main group. I mean, that's, you know, you don't have to look at it very hard to go, oh, maybe that is, you know, something to do with Vegeta. I mean, also, if you look at all the characters, like, if you look at the big three, all of whom are professed fans of mm. Toriyama in their work. Oh, yeah. Like, all of the, the protagonists have some DNA from Goku. Mm. Oh. And Goku is, like, the codifier for the modern shonen protagonist. Loud fight, uh, loves fighting, uh, always eating, bit of a dumbass, mm -hmm. very good at fighting. Find a shonen protagonist that doesn't have some Goku in him in some way. Mm. Yeah, he is the archetypal shonen protagonist nowadays. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's not just. Uh... Kishimoto, Kubo, and Oda that, you know, were inspired by him, you know, mentioned Tagashi, but, you know, there's just so many mangakas coming out and going, I can't believe it, I was so inspired by him when I first started. Many of them, like, watched a Red Dragon Ball growing up. Mm. Yeah. And that's not even mentioning the ones that were inspired by by the people who were inspired by Toriyama. Yeah, like the, like, um, I know, um, I'm pretty sure it's, uh, Akutami is inspired by, uh, either, um, Bleach or Black Clover in, no, it's definitely Bleach. Yeah. In, uh... Time wise, but, you know, um, Horikoshi inspired by Kishimoto. Mm hmm. And, the abundance of authors inspired by Oda as well. Mm. It's like hard to overstate just how profound uh hard yeah, you can't really overstate how profound his influence on the industry on the manga industry has been. Yeah. And like But speaking of like watching or reading it growing up, like Dragon Ball was like one of my first exposures to anime. Mm. Like I remember as a kid, I would like come home from school, turn on Toonami, and watch Dragon Ball Z when it was airing uh, through much of my childhood. It was like mm. Dragon Ball Z, Pokemon, and Yu Gi Oh! were like my big three uh, anime growing up, and they were all like really impactful on me. Mm. I still remember at, like all the kids, like, well, not all the kids, but a lot of kids talked about stuff like the Super Saiyan or. Uh, like all the different uh, fights or other transformations, or like I have distinct memories of like the Future Trunks special, Super Saiyan three, all uh, even the first Super Saiyan transformation uh, when those were airing uh, when I was young, mm -hmm. and it was just like this is just the coolest thing. I wa I love seeing this. I want to see more of this, and. That was kind of what I grew up on, what my generation grew up on, mm. especially. What about you, Shade? When I first met, when I first learned about Dragon Ball, honestly, I don't even, I was so young at the time, mm. and mm. it was my brother that had started watching it back in the early four kids era in the adult swim stuff like that and i just kind of latched onto it from that because he had the mm. tv or something or 
that one of the earliest games I remember from Dragon Ball was Budokai 2. I just Ooh. really liked the board game aesthetic and stuff and how silly it seemed. But yeah. how cool it also was too. It's just Yeah. I mean I I do have vague memories of it as a you know pretty small child of um Dragon Ball Z coming on and I think I was like confused because I didn't see any dragons. I, I must have not been watching an episode with Shenron, but um I I vividly remember them being in a desert, but that obviously doesn't help narrow it down considering how often they're in a desert. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember if Goku was an adult or a kid at the time? I honestly don't even remember seeing Goku. Or any, or really any characters. All Genuinely, all I remember is, is the wasteland and the lack of dragons in it. <laughs> I think it might have been Saiyan Saga. I, I, I see a distinct lack of both dragons and balls. I am not impressed. <laughs> False advertising. Yeah. I mean, it was it was also on this, like, pretty small, like, CRTV, and so, like... Mm. <laughs> that, would, that would do it, too. <laughs> and as I said, I barely, barely, barely remember doing it. I just do remember the hearing hearing the title Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z and thinking, there are no dragons in this. That's weird. <laughs> but as, uh, as I said... Um, no, go ahead. Go on. No, no, no you okay. go ahead. Uh, I do distinctly remember my first uh, time with the original Dragon Ball, though, because I didn't watch it through the anime. I watched it. I played it through a DS game. Oh, Dragon wow. Ball Origin. Oh. And Dragon Ball Origin is really... I think it played really well as a game and just was... I Dragon was... Ball in general has just had a very long history of very good, fun video games. And some that are not as fun, <laughs> looking at you, yeah. Connect. We don't talk about Connect. What are you talking about? Taiketsu was one of the best games out there. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it can't hurt you anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, um, I, I, remember... I mean, the fact My is... First... The fact is, oh. they're still making Dragon Ball games. <laughs> and a lot of them are still very well received, like fighters especially recently. Mm -hmm. um, fighters, Kakarot, yeah. um, you know, mm -hmm. even even Xenoverse to a certain extent, both Xenoverses, you know. Yeah. I remember playing uh, Budokai Tenkai G3 uh, way back in the day because I had a, uh, a Wii and that was like, that was like... M a game I had a lot of fun with because it's just a really fun time and all I remember the, playing through the story mode that too. All the alternate universe takes in those games were so, so fun. So like, fun. Like the Devil Man fights the Devil Frieza Man. invasion. Yeah, was... that's the one I was about to bring up because that one always stuck with me. Like, you know, they're technically right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's kind of insane. I mean, Toriyama created quite a few gag characters in that in those early uh, early portions that would kind Another of one. body Another a one. lot of the, a lot of the stuff that comes after. If it hadn't have been I mean, Goku, they fought. Another one that I very distinctly remember: Kid Goku and Aider versus Android Sixteen. Oh yeah, yeah, that was also really good. Like. It's kind of wild how many of the alternate universe ones were just like absolute blasts. And it just goes to show how all of these takes really are just just show how varied it, Akira Toriyama could be with his characters and 
it would just go well. Like you're like, yeah, I could see this happening because mm -hmm. everything it felt does justified is kind of like, and reasonable. Which is crazy to say when it comes to Dragon Ball for some yeah. people. Mm. But yeah, like, I'm not as familiar with the rest of it, uh, Toriyama's work, uh, I, I must confess. I do remember watching bits and pieces of a Blue Dragon anime when that was airing, uh, way back when. I, uh, I watched that, but I didn't watch through all of it. I also vaguely I. remember, and way back when, there was this game that my brother and I got from Gamefly that was a Blue Dragon game, and I remember it being really cool, but I, since it was Gamefly, we didn't keep it, obviously, and I cannot mm -hmm. remember for the life of me anything about it beyond, oh, this was cool. Yep. Blue Dragon was a wacky little uh, thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. Blue Dragon was fun, but I... My experience with Dragon Quest is pretty much limited to um, the Adventure of Die anime, which is very good, but not directly based off of Toriyama. It's mostly just like the character designs are very much based on his work. I have played Dragon Quest. Uh, is it, I've played Dragon Quest Seven, Dragon Quest parts of Dragon Quest Eight. Never finished it. Parts of Dragon Quest Nine, I did not like that version because I didn't understand it when I first played it because you had to, like, recruit characters in a way that I didn't expect from a JRPG at the time, and I wasn't compatible. Then there's Dragon Quest Eleven. Still That's Vondo the most recent one, right? Yeah. Silvando was just amazing in that. I bet. He embodies kind of, I think, Toriyama's view on things in a way, because Silvando's whole thing is he wants to save the world with one smile at a time. And... That's so wholesome. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how Toriyama has... He saved lives, no doubt, with his work. Yeah, a lot of people take a lot of heart in fiction. And especially works that are as po emotionally potent as, like, Toriyama's works. Yeah. I could definitely see that. But yeah, like... It, I, I just, like, can't, cannot even begin to wrap my head around how much his work has impacted people around the world. Like, he is, like, Dragon Ball is a, bordering on a religion in, like, Latin America, for example. It's huge there. It's a big thing, it's a big thing with people of my generation in America. I imagine it's fairly big in Europe as well, like, I think a global thing. Sure is like the big anime central area in Europe. Which area? France, I think, was the big anime mm. central location in Europe. I'm I'm not an expert on that, but that's what I've heard. Sounds about right. I mean going going back to Latin America, El Salvador, the government of El Salvador made a declaration of nationwide mourning. Mm-hmm. That tracks. I, mean, I feel like half the world is in mourning. A lot of people were very, uh, like, held Toriyama in extremely high regard, and for good reason. Mm-hmm. Like, he is the creator behind a lot of people's childhood experiences. Like, Dragon Ball is the biggest one, but a lot of people in Japan grew up on Dr. Slump as well. Mm-hmm. And Dragon Quest, for the uh, for a good portion of the time, 
a few years was the JRPG before Final yeah. Fantasy even came into existence. Oh. I don't know the exact timeline on that, but I know that Dragon Quest was the beginning. Dragon Quest, I believe, is like one of the two pillars of the JRPG genre alongside uh, Final Fantasy at this point. Final Fantasy, it's... I like to call the classic. I mean, Dragon Quest, I like to call the classic because it, it, it usually stays on formula, but it does that formula really well, while Final Fantasy likes to experiment. Yeah. Just, yeah. And it, it, it show, goes to show just how how important it is just have memorable character designs, memorable creature designs, and a classic story. There's a reason why people who know nothing about anime will always ask, is that Goku when they see an anime character? Mm-hmm. And, you know, let's not forget the fact that Super Saiyan as a transformation was first... Toriyama first came up with it as a way to reduce his workload so that he didn't, oh, yeah. so that he didn't that... have to uh, ink in uh, Goku's black hair as much. The biggest That's just so ever. funny. Like, just... <laughs> the most iconic... You know, uh, Shonen protagonist transformation. Shonen protagonist trans he, transformation he and bald. Excuse, he might have even made Goku bald if he <laughs> thought he could get away with it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But then Krillin would have even less to do. <laughs> uh, poor Krillin. What are you saying yeah, like, for Krillin? He's got a beautiful wife and a kid. That, that is he, true. Krillin does have a good That he named after end. his non-canon ex-girlfriend. Uh. <laughs> I mean, we should also mention that Toriyama had a terrible memory for some of his stuff. <laughs> yeah. He I forgot mean, about yeah. characters left yeah. and right. <laughs> Poor launch. The original <laughs> Super Saiyan. Who? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention that Toriyama wasn't the perfect creator, but the the point of of this is to just talk about his legacy and his work more than anything else. I mean, uh we've talked about how uh, his poor memory kind of helped him in that it made it, him more free to do things. He didn't feel as restricted by what he had already done. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, but we've we've talked about uh, the influence of uh, his stuff on you know the anime and manga industry let's talk about it in terms of uh we've talked about you know the character designs and monster designs in dragon quest but arale from dr slump helped inspire designs for mario and sonic yeah which is just That's... insane to think about there there is probably not a single thing since the, since like the 90s in Japanese media that could not have some sort of uh, Kevin Bacon degree yeah. of Kevin Bacon <laughs> with Dragon Ball. I mean, it's I, honestly kind of insane. I and feel like we should be. Re I feel like we should be renaming to degrees of Toriyama by now. Mm -hmm. Like there is so much stuff in modern. Like in modern Western cartoons, that's inspired by Toriyama's stuff. Like, yeah. there's so many parodies and homages to the Super Saiyan, especially, but also to like various other villains as well, uh, various other characters and designs as well. Yeah. From like the minor to the to the 
plot relevant. Yeah, one that comes to mind was there was one episode of Codename Kids Next Door. I was just thinking about that. <laughs> one of the shorts being number four and was Goku and it all all that he got with his transformation was bigger hair and then Frieza was the delightful children from down the lane yep and it looked, I think that they may have even had each of the heads maybe be an homage to a different form of his I don't remember because it has been years yeah it's kind of yeah It's hard to say, for sure, but... I mean, let's also talk about some something uh, pretty, you know, important to all of us, which is Funimation. You know, yeah. it's, it's one of those... It's now one of the only sites that we can watch anime legally on, and it wouldn't be a thing without the success of Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Funimation yeah, dub of Dragon Ball Z is just like iconic. It's the first thing they it did. Is. It's mm -hmm. the in fact, it's the only reason that they were even started is was to dub Dragon Ball. It's wild. Yeah, I I didn't even know that. I mean, I'm getting this from Wikipedia, so it could be complete horseshit. But you well, know, Wikipedia is usually reliable because they set their sources usually. I have to put asterisks there. I mean, there are a fair few, you know, sources as as to this, but you know, that maybe it's bullshit. I don't know, but at the very least, Dragon Ball was, you know, uh, the first thing they dubbed. So the <laughs> fact that it was so successful probably did help them stay alive in those early years. Oh, almost certainly. One <sighs> thing that kind of sticks to me, that this is kind of a faraway thing, though, that there's this one card in Yu-Gi-Oh! that was made based on a Super Saiyan because of a, like, I don't know if it was a Make-A-Wish or what was specifically inspired, but Tyler the Great Warrior. I don't know if mm. you guys heard of it, but it was it, it was basically a card created by Make-A-Wish or some similar organization that was one of a kind and the person who got it when he was who's, he's now better, but he was dying or he was uh, in had a condition. I don't know everything about it, but that card sold for thirty one thousand dollars or something around that. Yeah. Mhm. Mm Um, I mean, Toriyama was just a really good dude. Yeah. I mean, should we talk about Dragon Ball Evolution? Dragon Ball I Evolution know, was such a bad movie, it inspired him to uh, pen the script for <laughs> Battle of Gods. The, the actor of Goku for that made in a statement apologizing yeah. to Toriyama. I have... After, I just, have a, just a while ago, earlier today, I think it was. Yeah, I've, I've got a tweet of, um, it was in uh, an Instagram reel. Uh, Rest in peace, brother, and sorry we messed up that adaptation so badly. Yep. Yep. But hey, if, he, if they didn't mess it up, we wouldn't have... Who knows how much of Dragon Ball in the modern... In the modern sense we would have currently we probably would not have Beerus we would not have 
We would not have good Broly. I was, I, that, yeah. was that was the one I was going to mention. We, we would not have the better version of Broly. And we, of course, wouldn't have, you know, the movie Super Broly. Um, and the character that Which inspired. Is... I'm, of course, saying that the better Broly was... Um, which one was it? Uh, Kale. 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 Kale from uh, um, Universe 6. I both better Broly's. I mean, yeah. Yeah. OG Broly was kind of garbage. You don't need to... You don't need to he was you know, very one note. Okay. He was very... He was very okay for a single movie. But yeah. he was so popular that they decided that they'd keep using him. And, well... Look how that turned out. Yeah. We had Bio Broly to laugh at. <laughs> Look, the the move the worst movies were not his fault. No, no. The most he did with any of those movies, I think, was just give character designs. I don't think he actually gave much beyond that for a lot of those movies. Speaking of character designs, he's the one who did um, the, um, whatchamacallit, he, he did the Super Saiyan 4 character design, which is one of the best things come out of GT, by far. I'd say the best. Yeah, I, I it's hard to disagree with you there, honestly. Although I still think that the GT ending was pretty good overall. It was fairly good, yeah. Like, my one complaint about it is that it relies a lot more on um, stuff from Dragon Ball uh, than uh, stuff from, you know, GT itself for its closure. Mm -hmm. But that's just a me thing. Oh, and I also did, like, a Goku Jr.'s little movie because I thought it was a cute little homage. It wasn't amazing by any stretch, but it yeah. had a lot of references that I just thought were cute. Mm. It was a silly little thing, but it uh, turned out quite nicely. I, I just, uh, man. <clears throat> Again, like, you can't really talk about Toriyama's work without mentioning like everything that had at least some sort of impact on you directly or indirectly because of it like there's a the sandland uh that's getting an adaptation coming out this month i'm pretty sure yeah but i kind of i kind of do want to watch that because there's it's... also a game coming out i think for sandman yeah. maybe yes i believe so yeah oh. i mean Sandland is one of those series that felt like it was always being advertised at the back of um, at the back of volumes, along with um, stuff like yeah, Tagami Bachi. I, I, I vaguely remember that. Yeah, I've, I have always vaguely recalled Sandman, but I never actually looked into it. I'm like. Oh yeah, that's Toriyama stuff. That's, yeah. Is that Dragon Quest related? Because it looks like that reminds me of a Dragon Quest demon, sort of. Mm -hmm. Oh, there is one thing we absolutely have to do, I think. Everyone's had those moments in their childhood. Mm -hmm. With Dragon Ball where they either did a Kamehameha, they made it a cringy ass OC. Oh god, I remember those. Mine was Vegeta's younger brother, and he was a, an albino Sam. <laughs> we all had those. God. To share, I think. You're, you're, do you remember when there was that one, um, what was it? The Dragon Ball AF leaks? Uh, quote-unquote leaks that were like 
super on true but i was like oh god it's super saiyan 5 it looks so metal and it's like oh yeah i i never really looked into dragon ball af itself but i have seen the transformation and i have seen like songs and stuff with those as a picture on them or music it's videos so, related to it it's so delightfully silly mm-hmm But I notice you're not mentioning your own cringy moments. Look, it was mostly me just playing pretend in the backyard with my, oh. uh, with my brother and my friends. I did that what? in the, like, at blacktop over at school, basically. Mm, yeah. I was old enough when I came across Dragon Ball that I was uh, able to avoid most of the cringy stuff. Mm -hmm. No, I mean this is more. I mean, it's related, but um, I did, <laughs> I did start writing um, the lyrics to TFS's Perfect Cell introduction song uh, until like on a on a like it, bit of exam paper after I'd you know finished early. Um, then I sort of realized, huh, that might not be a good idea to write something about extinction on here. Um, should probably no stop that now. Like <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, let's also talk about the influence it has had on, you know, um, I mean, we're talking about the influence it had on us as fans, but, you know, you look at so many, um, so many industries now, you know, or so many, um, you know, football players, American football players in particular, I know, um, there's quite a few who've done. Day parade. Yeah, it, Goku Wait, making it to the Macy parade, Thanksgiving yep. parade, like, that was a huge deal when that happened. Oh, yeah. Paving the way for um, Floppy Hat Luffy to appear, uh, I think it was this year? Yeah, this past year, yes. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, one of my, uh, one of my favorite um, moments watching wrestling um, was the group The New Day coming out dressed in Saiyan armor. Um, at a WrestleMania, and it ju it just happened to be the WrestleMania that um, some of the TFS guys were at. Mm hmm You know that was that was just it's really cool to see that sort of thing happening, and it happened so often with Dragon Ball because of just how influential it was, and still is. Mm -hmm. Um. And a lot of people who are, like, really big on anime, like, nowadays, they're... The whole thing with them is... Most of them were either brought into anime by Dragon Ball or derivatives of Dragon Ball. Like, it's it's been just a huge phenomenon. Like, you see people, like, nowadays posting about how they're huge fans of Dragon Ball or One Piece or Naruto. And it's like... Or even like more indirectly derivative shows like Jujutsu Kaisen, and, and even Pokemon, the other widest, most influential franchise in Japan, heavily influenced by Dragon Ball in some way or another. Like the first legendary Mewtwo. Yep. That there's no way that's not. There is definitely some Frieza influence there. Absolutely. And I think even the manga's art style had had a bit of Toriyama inspiration. Mm. Especially like the levity with the main characters and stuff, but also clearly in a situation that is very dangerous, but they're 
the characters are all you know what I mean, right? Yeah. Oh, here's here's something that I I haven't hadn't seen before. Um Yasushi Yamaguchi, the designer of Tales from uh, Sonic, explained that he modeled Sonic and Tails' relationship after Piccolo and Gohan. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, beautiful. I, think, I, I saw that like two and a half hours ago, I want to say. Hmm. I completely forgot about it, but yeah. And There's the- been so much that's been coming out from like people who are t- who've been talking about how much they owe to Toriyama's work and his um, mm-hmm. influence overall. I mean, I've been I've been looking through Twitter basically to find you know all these messages that you know mangakas and other people in you know video game and anime and manga industries have said you know their messages um, about Toriyama's passing. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, there's. Uh, Tatsu Yukinobu, um, author of Dandadan, um, Hiroyuki uh, Asada, author of Tagami Bachi, Tatsuya Endo, Spy Family, uh, Kentaro Yubuki, To Yep. Uh, Ryichiro There's so Inigami, many. Oh. Yusuke Murata, uh, Ryuhei Tamura. I could, you know, go on and on and on. Lots of authors from many different genres, like, yeah. even if a lot of them are shown in they're like, mo- a lot of them aren't necessarily Babel shown in like Dragon Ball was. And it's like, not Spy Family in particular is one that I think of, like, sure, there's a bit of crazy action in there, but it's still mostly kind of a different sort of feel to it. I mean, it- at the same time, though, like, Early Dragon Ball was super uh, silly, super comedic. I mean, so I can see the influence there. Yeah, the the message that that Endo wrote is: if it weren't for Akira Tori- Toriyama, I probably would have would never have set my sights on becoming a mangaka. Even now, when I think about the Vida's perspective, I always think back to my childhood days when I excitedly look forward to Dragon Ball every week. Yeah. Um, and, you know, obviously, uh, the big three, Kishimoto, Oda, and Kubo, also um, posted messages as well. Also gave messages. The last part of Oda's message just fucking breaks me. Uh, I he, he capped off his message with, May heaven be as, be as gentle a place as you imagined it to be. Yeah. Or something along those lines. Just absolutely so much, so many beautiful statements about it. Mm. Ah, yes, it was. I hope that heaven will be as delightful a place as he envisioned it. Mm. But Toriyama's work is kind of timeless, honestly. Mm. Like a lot of the action really just is incredibly well done to the point where it's hard to argue uh argue like that there there's no real merit to it like it flows incredibly well it's very easy to read very cool very easy to follow and um just masterful work there even as like it was like the power uh stuff escalated like you can see the clear lines of action you can see how the ebb and flow of the fights go, and it's honestly spe- pretty spectacular. I think one thing that's going to be extremely hard is when we get to when Dragon Ball Daima comes out, because yeah. he seems so genuinely excited for what was to come with that. And it's hard to not be able to see his vision of that and have him be there for it. They were doing it for him because it was something he loved 
and now they'll be doing it for as an uh, something to honor his memory. And yeah, it's it's a rough thing to think about, but at the same time, it's it might be the last work he worked on, but it'll be something that bears his creative mark for sure. Mm. And I can't help but think that he would be happy with that. Mm-hmm. And on speaking of his mark, Toyotaro. Mm. I can't imagine the pressure after all this. I I would probably I wouldn't be able to handle it. Handle it. I don't think we. It's gonna be so much. Mm. Yeah. He, he, it's one of the highest names to live up to. Toriyama was like a legitimate giant of creative works in general, let alone the manga industry. But Manton put his body and soul into creating art, and he very clearly loved it with passion. That's a passion that's transferred to basically all of the people who followed in his footsteps. I can't help but feel he'd be proud of that, too. Yeah. Toriyama chose Toyotaro, and I trust Toriyama so much that I have no doubt that He'll succeed. Yeah. Even if he stumbles, he'll succeed. Hmm. I mean, Toyotaro's message, I think, says it all. I drew manga because I wanted to be tr- praised by Toriyama. It was everything to me. Damn. You know, I think I can't imagine the the joy Toyotaro must have felt when he was picked by Toriyama. Yeah, and was able to work, must have... work with Toriyama on the super manga. Mm-hmm. But I think I think that's where we can bring this to a close. I think that's as good a point as any to end on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I agree. All we can really say is that Toriyama is one of the most influential people certainly in you know entertainment mm-hmm. and, and Toriyama is the reason all of us met mm. yeah no I mean I I, th- I think I said in our server that if it hadn't have been for TBCA and that getting me to anime and manga I honestly don't know where I would be right now I said certainly wouldn't be here talking to the two of you yeah we we met because of T- uh, Team Four Star, and Team Four Star wouldn't be a thing. And Team Four if, Star if... met because of Dragon Ball, in a way. Mm. Yeah. Like uh, they all had their own projects beforehand, but a lot of the projects they were working on beforehand were based off of things influenced by Dragon Ball. Mm-hmm. Like Yu Hakusho, as I said earlier, like wasn't it was more contemporaneous than most of the other ones but it was still influenced by it for sure but yeah thank you everybody for watching 
hopefully you've gotten something out of this. Um, in terms of future stuff, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, streaming days, um, obviously, please do follow and YouTube stuff us as well. Thank you, Shade, for joining us. Um, no problem. I, I, I really wanted a reason to talk out loud about Toriyama in general. I, my family isn't really an anime loving family, yeah. so this, yeah. gave me, this gave me a way to express it that wasn't just on the keyboard. Mm. Yeah. It's nice to have an outlet where you can talk out loud about this kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I might tear up a little after I leave. Hmm. You wouldn't be the only one. But with that, but... again, thank you for watching, and please have a good rest of your weekend.